Good morning, good morning. It is Friday, Friday, June 2nd. No, it's not June. I'm still in June. It is July 2nd, 2021. And it is, I'm gonna say, a beautiful moment in the day. Good morning, Liz. So glad that you've joined us this morning. And I hope you have your coffee this morning. I actually stopped at Tim Hortons because I am on location this morning. Uh, good morning, Karen. So love, <laughs> I'm not sure you're gonna figure this one out this morning. Uh, we might have to do some word association to figure it out. Good morning, Susanna. So yes, so I brought my host coffee this morning. And so I'm like, I might as well pick one up too. Good morning, Brenda. Receiving the love, Patty. So good to see you, so good to see you. Mm-hmm. So uh, this morning, I'm on at a specific location because of the trees that are behind me. And that's actually what I want to talk about. Uh, Mike Moore, good morning. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning, Joyce. So glad that you're all joining in this morning. Yes, I'm going to take one more sip before we jump, jump in. Mm-hmm. Paul and Sue, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so this morning I'm actually at Chris and Melissa Wakefield's and because I'd, I'd heard stories and I'd seen pictures about the gypsy moth infestation and if you can see behind me these are oak trees uh, that have literally been defoliated of all of their leaves and are just starting to grow back now and every day I tell you a couple of things I tell you to like and share and go outside because we get to connect with God in so many different ways when we go outside. And I just believe and scripture says that the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth is full of his glory. And so there's so many, you know, life lessons that we can take from nature as we walk outside. And every time I looked at these sad, sad trees, all I could think about was the way that sin or the power of our words can just defoliate, strip things right out of my life or our lives. And, and what's interesting, does anybody know, does anybody know how the gypsy moth came to Canada or to North America? Anyone? Any idea how the gypsy moth I'm going to use this moment to take a few sips of coffee. How the gypsy moth came. I know it's like, it's like nature alive with Jen. I, that has potential. Um, yes, does anybody know how the gypsy moth came to Canada or even North America? Good morning, Leanne. Mm-hmm. Yep. As, as, as you're typing in your thoughts, as I went to Tim Hortons this morning, uh, the very lovely lady who helped me, she's like, it's so quiet out today. And I, I realized most people have today off. So I am so glad that you guys are joining me this morning, waking up at the crack of seven um, and in fruit containers on a boat. Good morning, Steve Bradley. I would love to say yes. Right? Wouldn't that be wonderful if they just sort of snuck onto a boat somewhere and got carried over? No, actually, it was intentional. Uh, so, <clears throat> according to Google, uh, yes, Paul Nicely, check, check, they were brought here to make silk. So, because of uh, the Civil War and there was a lack of cotton to make clothes, some entrepreneurial people decided, well, let's try to figure out if we can make silk. And so they brought gypsy moths over for the purpose of seeing if they could use um, the strands that they make to make silk. <clears throat> As the legend goes, in the process of doing this, some of those gypsy moths escaped. And so now we have gypsy moths invasions all the time defoliating our trees. There you go. Nature moment with Jen. And so I just find it very interesting that, um, right, we know the story, there's a way that seems right to man, but in the way it leads to death. Like so often we can get ideas into our head and we can think, wow, this would be a really great idea. But have we actually passed it past the Lord, right? 
Have we prayed about it? Or is it just, it, it feels good, it sounds good. There might even be some other people that agree with us. But the gypsy moth idea, not a good one. So that's my first lesson from the gypsy moth this morning is um, to, to lay all of our plans before the Lord, first and foremost, even if it's like, wow, this would make so much sense if we did this and think of all the time that we could save and money that we could make and people we could make happy. I'm gonna say, can you pass it by the Lord and, and wait, <laughs> wait. So that's my first lesson uh, is, is uh, submit your plans to the Lord because, right, they thought it was a great idea to bring the gypsy moths over and now we have defoliation of trees. Uh, the second thing that it makes me think about is, I don't know if you can see it, but further down, and I'm sure you, you have, is there's tape around the trees and they're there as a guard to prevent the gypsy moths from climbing up the trees. And it says in scripture that we, that God will actually put a guard on our mouth in Psalm 141 if we ask him to. But we have to ask him to. So here's a question. Why should we ask God to put a guard on our mouth? Also another opportunity for me to drink coffee and you to be thinking about this. Why? Why should we ask God to put a guard on our mouth? Yep. I've actually been thinking about this one. I've been thinking about this this Devo for a week. I think I mess Melissa's out here with me. She's she's my support crew. I think I messaged you last week. Yeah. And I said, hey, can I come do a Devo about your trees? Uh, and she said, yes, you can. So I've been thinking about this for a while. Just the, the damage that gypsy moths do. And we say stupid, hurtful, lying things <laughs> on our own. So true. We say stupid, hurtful, lying things on our own. So it would make sense that we ask God, all powerful, to put a guard on our mouth to save us from foolish stupid oh just hold this foolish embarrassment yes to help us not to say hostile things you guys are good this morning this is what happens when maybe some of you don't have to go to work uh, because words have power yes uh, the book of Proverbs actually says the power of life and death is in the tongue and so it's important to put a guard around, <laughs> around our tongue in front of our mouths uh, in the form of oh, all powerful creator would be the best guard possible. So we say we, we should be waking up every morning and saying, God, would you put a guard around my mouth as like the guards around the tree, right? So that when <laughs> my words actually will get stuck in my mouth before they actually come out. So I'm not gonna say stupid things, I'm not gonna say hurtful things, I'm not going to, to say, uh, even speak lies, or, or cause people undue harm, right? So just as, as people put a guard around the tree to protect the tree from further damage, we need to ask the Lord to put a guard on our mouth um, to prevent us from saying unkind, stupid words that are going to hurt people. Uh, the third thing, uh, as I looked at these defoliated trees, was the idea of the power that happens when those words come out. They literally, and James says it's like this, they are like a forest fire. So let me just uh, open my Bible here. So this is James uh, chapter 3, verse 5. It says this. Uh, okay, Lord. Please bless this as we read it. We've already mentioned some of your scriptures today and we just ask that you would speak your word to our hearts and we would receive it. Amen. It says, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and itself is set on fire by hell. Wow. Right? 
I don't know if the moths die when I think the moths actually go somewhere else when the leaves are gone and we see this right and this is the power of words so when it's just like a flame you can think you put out a fire and this is the problem with all the forest fires um, you can think that you get a handle and it just takes one spark one spark uh, I had a candle sitting on my table and I blew it out and one tiny little spark came down and landed on the top of my table and it actually left a burn mark and now every time I sit down at my table I see that little burn mark and I was like wow like the tiniest little spark, right, can cause such uh, devastation. And so when we, we read that passage, right, our, our mouths are actually set on fire by the power of how, like, I think the enemy comes in and he, like, our thoughts, right, which is why we we're told to take every thought captive. And if we don't have that guard on our mouth, sometimes, and we know this, we, we say this, did you actually think before you spoke? Um, and the words just come out and then they can fly in so many places so many places and uh, we know we know right the effects of the gypsy moth um, <clears throat> one is the devastation the defoliation of the trees second thing is uh, they poop a lot and I don't know about you but I've actually fallen on gypsy moth poop where I've, I've stepped on a step and I was not I was in flip-flop so all right my fault but then I like whoop, and I fell, right? Because there was gypsy moth poop on the steps and I was at um, some friend's house last week and their whole driveway was covered in gypsy moth poop. And I'm like, please don't come out here because they're a little bit older. Uh, and I, I didn't want them to break a hip and I was concerned that I was gonna break a hip. And they're like, we have sprayed this and tried to get rid of it. And then you know what happens? They just keep pooping. So even, so I want you to hold on to that image is that that's the problem uh, with with gypsy moths right or with our words like we can say them but their effects ha are so much greater than we can ever imagine and and uh, thirdly and we've heard this probably more than we've seen this um, gypsy moths they they hang on that string and they wait for the wind to come along to blow them into the next spot <clears throat> I have had friends that let's just say the caterpillars have found themselves in places where they should never be like down your shirt and what happens you hear screaming a lot of screaming and so they also produce fear <laughs> so not only are, are, are the the effects of the gypsy moth like you can slip and fall and hurt yourself uh, they can you can actually create fear with them being on you and they literally like strip um, I want to say your integrity hmm? and give rashes which yes I did know that too so <clears throat> dangerous those little tiny things so what is the take home from this as I've been thinking about it? One, guard our tongues, right? The power of life and death is in the tongue, so we need the Lord to guard our tongues and, and to take every thought captive. Because when those words come out, um, they can cause so much damage to so many people in so many ways. They can produce fear, they can produce hurt, uh, they can strip other people of, of their hopes and dreams with unkind words, hurtful words, lying words. Yep, so we need that tongue around our mouth. Uh, plans, <laughs> make sure we put our plans to the Lord so he can actually sort them out uh, before we do something that's gonna hurt uh, somebody else. And so when we, <laughs> you're gonna be looking at gypsy moths now in a totally and completely different way. So I wanna encourage you today uh, to just ask the Lord about your plans and about your words. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much that you've said that you would help us and so we ask today for a guard on our words and a guard in our thoughts that we would think the way you want us to think and we would speak the way you want us to speak and Lord that you would help us to be slow to speak speak and quick to listen and Lord would we wait to speak would we wait to act for your peace to guide and direct us and we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right.
Wow. Okay, look at all this information you guys are telling me about gypsy moths. Cool. All right, my dear friends, <laughs> that's it. That's all. Remember to like, share, and go outside and have <laughs> beware of the gypsy moth. Okay, bye.